Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check two new battery chargers by Toolkit RC. The first one is the M4AC, which is a simple AC-powered battery charger that can charge a single battery. And the second one is the M4Q, which is a more advanced battery charger that operates both on DC and AC and can charge up to four batteries simultaneously. In this video, I'm going to go over the specs and features of both chargers and show you how to use them. First, let's start with the M4AC. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the charger, you can find an AC cable and a quick user guide. And in terms of specs, the AC input voltage is between 100 to 240 volts, so you can use it worldwide. Its maximum output is 30 watts, it can charge up to 4 S batteries, and its maximum output current is 2.5 amperes. In addition, it features a 1.54 inch 240 x 240 color LCD screen, and supports charging LFE, LHV, and LiPo batteries. On the back side of the charger, you can find an AC power socket. On its right, bottom, and left sides, you can find ventilation holes, and you should note that since this battery charger doesn't feature a built-in fan, you should keep them unblocked when operating the charger. On its top side, you can find a single button that will enable you to toggle between the different options. And finally, on its bottom front side, you can find either an XT30 or an XT60 battery connector, depending on the version that you've got, and a 4S balance connector. Now I've got the charger powered up. Operating the charger is done using the type slash current button, which is the only available button on the charger. Short pressing the type slash current button is going to toggle between the four available current options, 0.5, 1, 2, and 2.5 amperes. Long pressing this button is going to toggle between 4 voltage options, so you can charge your batteries to either 4.2, 4.35, 3.85, and 3.6 volts. You should note that using this charger, you won't be able to discharge your batteries, so for example, if you are going to plug in a full battery and set the end voltage to 3.6 or 3.85 volts, the charger is not going to do anything. As for charging batteries, all you have to do is to plug the battery that you want to charge in the following manner and press the type slash current button in order to adjust your settings. When first powering on the charger, it is going to start at locked mode, which means that if you are going to apply a battery, it's not going to be automatically charged, but after powering it up for the first time, as you can see right now, it entered standby mode and upon connecting a battery, the charger is going to start automatically charging it. Pressing the operation button is going to enable you to adjust the charging settings. While you do so, the charger enters standby mode, and once you stop adjusting the settings, the charging procedure is going to be resumed. Finally, in case you would like to stop the charging procedure, all you have to do is to disconnect the connected battery. After using the M4AC to charge a 4S LHV battery, as you can see, the cells are fairly balanced, but in case you would like to manually calibrate the battery voltage, you can do so by holding the type slash current button while connecting the AC cable, and then using this menu, after testing the battery using a multimeter, you can adjust the voltage value of each cell individually. In addition, you can also adjust the terminal voltage values in 0.05 increments, so for example, I can set the value that was previously set to 4.2 to 4.25 volts, and in case you would like to restore the charger to the default factory settings, you can do so by long pressing the type slash current button while selecting the default option. So overall, priced at around $25, I think that the M4AC can be a good solution for beginners who'd like to charge their batteries, since it is very compact, easy to use, affordable, and won't require you to use an external AC adapter. Keep in mind though that this is a very basic charger and it will allow you to charge up to 4S batteries. In addition, you should note that in case you would like to charge a 1S battery, you will need to use an adapter in order to plug it to the balance port and the battery connector, otherwise you won't be able to charge it, so hopefully the next version of this charger will feature a dedicated 1S battery connector. Now let's move on to the second and more advanced battery charger, the M4Q. Just like the M4AC, inside the box along with the charger, you are getting an AC cable and a quick start guide, but on top of that you are also getting a USB to micro USB cable for updating the firmware of the charger. In terms of features and specs, the M4Q can be powered both using AC and DC. The AC input voltage is between 100 and 240 volts, and the DC input voltage is between 10 to 18 volts. When powered using DC, the maximum output per channel is 50 watts. 
When powered using AC, the maximum output power per channel is 50 watts in case you are going to use two channels and 25 watts in case you are going to use all of them and regardless, the maximum current per channel is 5 amperes. On the top side of the charger, you can find a 3.5 inch color LCD IPS screen with a resolution of 480 by 320 pixels. On its right, bottom, left and back sides, you can find ventilation holes and this charger features a built-in fan that kicks in according to the internal temperature of the charger. Navigating between the different options is done using the channel slash exit button and a scroll wheel clickable button. And finally, on the front side of the charger, you can find four channels for charging four batteries simultaneously. So you can find either XT60 or XT30 battery connectors according to your version and next to each one, a 4S balance connector. Now, as you can see, the charger is powered up. Switching between the four channels is done by short pressing the channel slash exit button and selecting a channel is done by short pressing the scroll wheel button. Then over here, you can configure the battery type between the following options. The supported battery types are LiPo, LHV, LIFE, Lithium Ion, NIMH and PB. The number of battery cells can be determined automatically or if you'd like, you can set it manually. The mode can be set to charge or storage charge. You can adjust the end voltage per cell according to the battery type that you selected and the charge mode. And finally, the charge current can be set between 0.1 all the way to 5 amperes. Once you are done configuring the settings, you can highlight the number of channel that you would like to use. So if you'd like to apply the same settings, for example, for all the channels, you can highlight all the channels and press start in order to start the charging procedure. Once the battery is connected to the channel that you are going to use, after pressing start, the charger is going to confirm your selection and pressing OK will start the charging procedure. While charging the battery, you'll be able to monitor its voltage, the current it is being charged with, and the total milliampere that the battery was charged with. Over here, you can see the battery voltage per cell, and after about a minute of charging the battery, you'll be able to monitor its internal battery cell's resistance. While charging the battery, you'll be able to either stop the charging procedure or adjust the current by selecting the channel, then short pressing the scroll wheel button, and then over here, you can adjust the current, and pressing stop will stop the charging procedure. You should note that it is of course possible to charge different types of batteries simultaneously. So for example, now I'm charging a 4S LiPo battery on channel one and a 2S LHV battery on channel four. In order to enter the settings menu, first make sure that no batteries are being charged and then long press the scroll wheel button. Then under the setup menu, you can enter the input settings. Over here, you'll be able to select the power selection which is by default set to P1. When the charger is powered using AC, you won't be able to adjust the power selection and therefore you won't be able to adjust the max power, max current and lowest voltage settings. And when the charger is going to be powered using DC, you'll be able to set the power selection to P2 and then adjust the settings. Under security settings, you'll be able to adjust the safe internal temperature, adjust the safe time, which is by default set to 200 minutes so if this set amount of time is going to pass, the charger is going to stop charging the connected batteries. And similarly, adjust the safe capacity, which is by default set to 30 ampere hour. Next, the continuous walk mode, which is by default turned off, can be turned on. In case it is going to be turned on, after unplugging a battery when the charging procedure is complete, the next battery is going to be charged using the same settings. The walk completed can be set to either end or trickle. The battery selection menu, which is by default turned off, can be turned on. In case it is going to be turned on, after pressing the scroll wheel button on the main screen, you'll be able to see this menu, where you'll be able to define or use predefined battery charging settings. Next in the menu, you can adjust the backlight and buzzer settings. You can set the language of the interface, which is by default set to English. You can set the theme style to either light or dark. And finally, you can restore the charger to its default settings. In addition, in case you need to calibrate the charger, you can enter the voltage calibration menu by holding the scroll wheel button while powering the charger. And then using this menu, you can manually calibrate the voltage of each independent cell. Once you are done, don't forget to select save before hitting exit. And if you'd like, you can also restore the charger to its default settings by selecting the default option. As for updating the firmware of the charger, simply connect it to your computer using its micro USB port. It is going to be recognized as a flash drive, and then you can head over to Toolkit OC's website, download the latest available firmware update, 
and copy it to the newly discovered flash drive. So overall, after testing out the Toolkit RC M4Q charger, I can tell you that it provides an elegant, convenient and affordable solution for charging four 4S batteries simultaneously. Its main downside of course is that it is limited to 4S batteries and I also found an issue that the batteries cannot be discharged and I'm going to report this issue back to Toolkit RC and hopefully it is going to be resolved in the next firmware update. Anyway, that's going to be it for my review of the Toolkit RC M4Q and M4AC chargers. I hope this review was informative enough, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.